Hello everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look at logging in and validation because as you know, when we click on register right now, the request will go through, but it won't actually show any feedback on the form. So yeah, that's kind of a shame. And we're going to fix that by setting up a global validation handler. And to do that, we're going to need to use a uh, few acts. So we're creating a validation.js that is going to export the state so the errors object is going to be empty then we're going to have our getters our mutations and of course our actions so to fill these out, I'm going to start with getters. Uh, so we're going to have a errors getter, which is going to receive the state, and then that's just going to re uh, return the state dot errors. Then as a mutation, we're going to have a set validation errors, which is going to be receiving state and errors. So that is going to say state dot errors equals the new errors. And then as the action, we're just going to say set errors. It's going to receive in commit errors. And that will commit this action or mutation actually. So this is going to commit this mutation with the errors that are passed in. And to clear the errors, which we're also going to want to do in our middleware, we're also going to receive the commit but we're just going to say this with an empty object. All right. I think I made a typo here somewhere. All right, so I just need to remove this bracket here. All right, that's that. So now what we can do is we can uh, make this a global mixin. So we always have this uh, validation always have these validation errors available so how we're going to do that is we're going to go into our plugins make a mixins folder and then uh, we're going to say validation.js that is going to import view from view we're going to import map getters from UX and then we're going to say const validation equals an object and then we're going to say install and receive a few options and then we're going to register our mixing. So it's going to be a computer property map getters errors is validation slash errors because of course when you create a file in here so you create a you export a state and this file is going to be namespaced under the file uh, name which is validation in this case so it's going to be validation slash these errors all right so below here we're just going to say view dot use validation and that is going to be that so when we register this plugin later on in our next config it should pick this up and we have our validation uh, globally available. Um, all right, so I got a syntax error here. Oh no, I've already fixed that. All right, good. So now what we want to do is when we receive in a request, what we want to do is we want to pick that up when it fails and we want to set our validation errors. So we can do that with Axios by uh, Ha hooking on an or an error event and the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a file here in the plugins folder again and say axios.js and say export default function then that's going to say axios and store and then we're going to say axios.onerror 
I'm going to receive an error in here. And then we're going to say if error.response.status equals 422. So that's, of course, our um, error code we send off when the file, uh, when the request can process. We're going to say store.dispatch validation slash set errors. Then we're going to say error.response.data. Dot errors. So this is going to look into the request and set these errors. Uh, and then we're going to reject the promise just to make sure that nothing can go through on request. Store the dispatch violation slash clear errors. So every time a request gets made, it first of all sets the, it first of all clears the errors so that it doesn't, you know, pick up the old errors uh, when someone makes, makes a new request, which uh, we kind of need. So the last thing we need to do before we go register our plugins in the Nuxt config is create a middleware, which is going to um, make sure that we clean the validation errors on each page change. So the way we're going to do that is by creating a simple middleware. Export default function. Just going to have the store. Store does ditch patch. And you guessed it, validation clear errors. So that's really simple. That's all that's going to do. And then we're just going to go into the Nuxt config. And what we're just going to do is we're going to fill out these ones. So we're going to say plugins slash mixin slash validation and plugins axios. But we also want to register our middleware, which I don't think we have that right now. So we're going to have to define that. Um, into router, I think. So we're going to create a router um, object here. Just then going to have a middleware array. And we're just going to say clear validation errors. All right. So that's going to be that all cleared up. So now what we can do is we can go into our page of register. And what we can then do is we can go in our div here and we can actually say fed conditional class. Oh, I don't know. First of all, I'll just check if this is all going through. So I'll just say errors. Go here. And it doesn't look like it. So, um,. Let me just see if my, all right. So errors is not defined, which is really weird because we got this, uh, I think we might need to register the mixing as well, which we, oh wait, we need to restore our server of course, just to get, make sure this um, config change is picked up. All right, so we're gonna, all right, unknown middleware, clear validation errors. So that's not good. Clear, valid, oh, typo here. All right, so that's not working. Now we see an empty object. When I refresh or when I click register, it's not going to say all these errors and hopefully they'll disappear, yes. All right, so I think everything is working. If we go to register here, we're just gonna add a conditional class, class um, equals this. And then we're gonna say is invalid. And that is going to be the case if there's errors.name. 
All right. Um, all right, so we need to obviously wrap this in these. So now, yes, that's turning red. All right, so a little div. Just going to show if we have errors dot name. That's going to grab the first one, and we'll do the same for email. and password. And these ones as well. So email and password. So if I submit to self, you can see all the errors. When I fix one of them, so I say Fred's, I submit it up again and that one goes and so forth. So now what I want to do is make our login page, which um, just goes to the dashboard right now. So let's say login of you. I think I'll just copy this stuff because I quite like this markup. And we'll copy this, we'll change the, uh, the method to login, change this to login, this to login remove this one and then uh, let's check it out go to layouts partials dot nav change this to all slash login all right good so now we're going to go to login and we're going to change the method so this is the login function which is now going to say await this dot off dot login and then we'll pass in the data which is just going to be this dot form all right really easy and then it's going to say router push name index all right so if i click it it's going to say invalid email address or password if i register right now so i'm going to say fits at test.com um, sorry all right so testing I guess and testing so that has now locked us in um, yeah if we go look at our application local storage we can see the bearer token in here so that has locked this in successfully. And yeah, in the next episode, we're going to look at, you know, protecting our routes with middleware. So people can visit this dashboard as guests. And we're going to make sure that the name shows up with a uh, global mixing for the user data. So you can quickly check if your user is locked in. And we're going to make sure they can log out. So thank you for watching for this episode. And I hope you tune in on the next one. Um, yeah, that was it. Please leave a like and subscribe. 